Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life, part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction to cell Cell theory Prokaryotes versus eukaryotes Eukaryotic cell structure where we, wherein we'll talk about cell membrane, cell wall, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, ribosomes, lysosomes, vacuoles, mitochondria, plastids, cytoskeleton, cilia and flagella, centrioles and nucleus. Then we'll talk about prokaryotic cell structure. Cell. This is something which we have already studied in our junior classes. In class 9th, we have already uh, learned a lesson on the fundamental unit of life. So there also we discussed about cell in quite detail. So we are already aware of uh, some of the basic facts about cell. But still here in this lesson, we will try to understand cell, the structure of the cell, the different components present in a cell in further more detail. So now to start this, we'll start with the basics so that those who have forgotten whatever you have studied in class 9 do not get any difficulty in understanding it. Now cell is the building block of all living organisms. All forms of life, whether it is animals, plants, microorganisms, insects, human beings, whatever you can think of, anything that has life is made up of cells. Right, So that is why it is said to be the funda most fundamental, functional and structural unit of life. When I say building block of living organisms, what do I mean? Building block. What is building block? What do you need when you want to build a house? For this building to be there, there has to be some basic building blocks. And what are they? They are nothing but the bricks. This entire building is made up of maybe multiple of bricks which are placed one above the other and then cemented and then given this beautiful structure. So similarly for every living organism, their body, the basic unit is cell. So many cells together form a beautiful organism. So that is why cells are known as the building block of all living organisms. Now when I say living organisms, just go to all the extremes, starting from yourself. We are all living organisms, so even our body is made up of cells, which we are not able to see maybe because they are very, very minute. So you can see them only using microscopes and that too you need really powerful microscopes to see them. Talking about any type of organism, starting from aquatic organisms to huge elephants, birds and of course plants. So all variety of life, end of the day, the basic unit in all of them is nothing but cell. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about cell in quite detail. So we will talk about the structure of the cell, what is it made up of, what are the different components present in a cell and what is the function that each of them perform. So we will look into all those aspects. Now to start with, how was cell discovered? Who discovered cell? How did we get to know? See, today we are reading it in textbooks that, okay, uh, our body is made up of cells. But several years ago, there were no textbooks because people didn't know that there is something called cell. So how was it discovered and who discovered it? It so happened around long time back, around say 1660s, that King Charles II of England, he ordered Sir Christopher Wren, who was a scientist, to make a series of microscopical studies. Because even in those days, even those early days also, the kings used to spend a lot of their time and I mean, they, they themselves did not spend, but they hired people to spend a lot of their time in understanding science because science was not that developed those days. So the same thing was done by King Charles II as well. He asked Sir Christopher Wren to make a series of microscopical studies. That is, he asked him to study a lot of microorganisms and make a note of his observations. 
Now, this person, he did not have time, Christopher. So what did he do? He handed it over to an upcoming scientist named Robert Hooke. So Robert Hooke that time was, was around 25, 26 years old. So he was a young lad, but he was an aspiring scientist. So what did he do? He put in a lot of his efforts. He put in a lot of technical efforts as well. He started observing many different organisms, whichever he could form around himself. And putting in so much of effort, he ended up discovering cell. So he was the one, Robert Hooke, somewhere around 1665, he discovered cell. So just see how much of an effort was needed because cell is not something which is very big and which is easily visible by our naked eye. You really need microscopes and that too you need powerful microscopes. And those days you can imagine, like these days you have electron microscope and so many things. But those days, even though some microscope was there, they were not that good, they were not that powerful, not that good resolution. But Robert Hooke, he had some technical expertise as well. So he designed a microscope himself, which was powerful enough to discover cell, to observe cell in living organisms. So this is how the microscope designed by Hooke looked like. So what did he do? His experiment was with a cork. You know this, this cork cork of this bottle. So what was this cork made up of? It was made up of the bark of a tree which was once living. So currently it was not living, right? It, it was dead. But once a tree was living and now that is dead and the bark of that tree was used to make this cork. So out of his own interest, he observed a variety of objects and this cork was one of them. So what did he observe with his microscope? He observed honeycomb like structures structures like this this is what he observed now this picture is actually taken from the book which is written by robert hook named micrographia so there he had put these pictures so if you look at it how does it look like it, it looks it resembles the honeycomb right so he, when you observe it quite closely you will actually see that there are empty spaces contained by walls. So something like this. Right? So small, small spaces, empty spaces and some boundaries. So he observed, th this was what he directly observed. So, and this structure was named as cell. So he said that each of those space or each of those cubes is nothing but a cell. So many such cells together forms any living organism. Now, as I said, cork was a dead tissue. So basically, actually, I mean, today we know everything. So what Hook observed were nothing but empty cell walls of dead plant tissue. So it was a plant tissue, obviously. So this was nothing but only the cell walls because the cells are already dead. Cork is nothing but a dead plant tissue. So the cells are dead. It was only the cell walls which he actually saw that time. But those days, cell walls, cell membrane, all these things were not defined. People didn't even know what is a cell. So looking at this structure, he said that cells are there. So cells are the basic unit. Now after experimenting with cork, he also repeated this experiment with many other living cells because this was a dead cell. And when he performed this experiment with the living cells, he observed that there was some fluid-like substance present in those empty spaces. So the spaces were not actually empty, but there was something present there. So Hook concluded that cells are filled with juices. So there is some fluid-like thing present, which is bounded by the boundaries. And that fluid-like thing is a juice maybe. So he termed these spaces as cells. What is the meaning? Why did he name them as cells? Because the word cell is a Latin word which means small rooms. So this is how he interpreted them, that they, these are small rooms with walls all around them. So he called them cells. Now, however, Robert Hooke was the first 
person to discover cell but he did not by by this time he did not have any knowledge on the internal structure of a cell i mean what is the cell made up of what all things are present inside the cell he just said that okay cells are there in all living organisms and they are filled with juices this is what he told thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again